Let's get things started. falling in love with this thing. I've been driving this car everywhere ever since it was manual swapped. I've probably been through two tanks of petrol in the past couple of days simply because I've just been enjoying it so much. You know, I never thought that having a transmission swap, making it manual would be that much better. I knew it was going to be a little bit better, but I didn't think I'd like it this much. The boys will all know and they'll agree with me that I've been driving this thing everywhere and just enjoying it, asking everyone to go on cruises and stuff because it's so fun to drive. Having manual and hearing that dose is, is crazy. Just look at it. Oh my god, look at that. <laughs> I do need to fix the bumper there, but other than that, it is clean as hell. Jesus. Damn. <gasps> Alright, so enough of me frothing my own car. Let's get on to what we're doing in today's video. So I know you guys love seeing POV driving videos of the car, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. I've got a GoPro right here. I'm going to strap it on my head. I've also got a GoPro on the engine bay so I can pick up all that sound that's coming from the turbo. And we're going to run some errands because we've got a lot of stuff that we need to do today. Just enjoy the car, just drive it around, have a little bit of fun with it. Like I said, I have just been driving it everywhere, enjoying all the different sounds that it makes, stuff, stuff that I'm not used to. And the thing is, it doesn't even have an exhaust on it yet. As soon as this thing gets an exhaust on it, it's going to sound so much better. We'll really be able to hear the classic one. 1J sound that everyone knows and everyone loves and it's just gonna make sense coming out of this car because it just looks so damn good it looks like it would sound so damn good as well it's such a shame that it has such a little tiny pea shooter in the back look at that oh god I hate this thing <laughs> it's riding pretty low as well had a little bit of scraping incidents there but you know low life before we put the GoPro on my head, we're first gonna go to McDonald's and we're gonna pick ourselves up a coffee because it's a really early start to today's video. I'm pretty tired, pretty drowsy, and coffee is the best thing in the world. Prove me wrong. Oh boy, I'm too tired. Thank you. Whoa, gotta watch the coffee and my camera. We <laughs> got a cup holders in this car though, so. Yeah, baby. All right, before we get started, we are all synced up. I'm going to do a quick walk around of the car with the GoPro on my head so you guys can get a good look at it. It is sitting pretty damn low right now. Probably need to raise it a little bit, to be honest. But I don't know. It looks so, so good that I don't even want to do that. I've probably said at least three times now how much I like to look at my car. So let's just skip and get into the car itself. <laughs> all right, so we're going to leave the windows open all just a little bit cracked. We're currently running a GFB boost gauge. It is currently set at 13 PSI. Stock from factory, these cars make about 10 PSI. Maybe a little bit less, but with an intercooler and stuff, you can expect somewhere around 10 PSI, which my car already has. We're running a pretty much factory standard exhaust, so nothing too special, unfortunately. So you won't hear really much exhaust sound. You're also gonna see the car turn off every now and then, and that's simply because I haven't set up the automatic ECU properly to its idle setting. So because it's a manual swap, what happens is the idle sit a little bit lower than from factory manual so we need to play with the idles so the car will stall every now and then you're also going to hear a very rattly sound that's just the twin plate clutch uh no big deal at all
So we've come to a stop. So I'm gonna take the time and show you guys that this car can drive completely normally. And it feels like totally fine to drive. It's got climate control. You've got vents that swing back and forth. But yeah, like I said, it's super hard to drive this car normally because it just makes all the good sounds when you're on it. <laughs> oh man, it's so addictive. Go through so much petrol. Now, unfortunately, because the car's so low, we can't really take it around to the hills and stuff because every time I'll try to corner or do anything, it just scrapes and makes a really bad sound. And we also got to be really careful because we might stall the car because it just turns off like it just did just then. Yep, it just keeps turning off because we haven't played around with the idle stuff yet. So we do need to do that. So good. So, so there you go, that's me having a lot of fun with it today, just driving around the streets and sort of just dosing everywhere. Um, I have fallen in love with this car. It's so good to drive. So I, I completely understand why so many people love these cars. Um, and we're only just getting to the beginning of what we're gonna do to this thing. You know, currently it has an open differential, no exhaust, no power mods besides a boost controller. So there's plenty of potential for this thing. And I'm so happy that I got a basic stock one so I could take you guys on the journey of sort of building it up. But the thing that I find so sad about these cars is that they're increasing in value so much. And yes, that kind of sounds backwards because I have one and I'm sort of complaining that I'm making money just by having it, but it's the fact that many people won't be able to ever experience 90s Japanese cars anymore because they're just increasing so much in value. A lot of people won't be able to afford them anymore. I was extremely lucky that I got mine before the big increase of price in all 90s Jap cars. So I'm very thankful for that. But yeah, it's just such a shame because there's so many cool cars like R33 GTSTs, like my mate's one, R32s, R34s, 180SXs, all those cool Japanese cars, all those cool 90s Japanese cars that you know and love. Just going to become stupid expensive in the near future. So they're all going to be importable, if that's a word, to the States soon. So you won't be able to get these anymore because they're all just going to get shipped over to the States. Yeah, I'm, I'm so lucky and I'm so happy that I have it. Hello. Hello. What are these called, Rexon? Can't show the address. Why are you filming? What if you accidentally show an address? Oh no. I'm just going for a little spin. All right, so Chloe has been in the car once. So she doesn't know what it's like, manual and all, but I thought I'd get her reaction again. Oh. It's quicker, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It's, yes? I don't remember. You don't remember? It's been a few days. All right, all right, we'll give it a bit. You ready? That wasn't that bad. Oh, what? Well, it wasn't that bad. That, well, it wasn't that bad. I want you screaming. I want you crying, all right? I want it to be you that quick. You want me to cry? No, I want it to be so quick. That you that you don't want to be in the car anymore. <laughs> until it's until she's like that, then I'm not gonna be happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to hold it. Well, otherwise, it's I'm only just, the smallest camera in the world. It's like. literally so heavy in my hand. <laughs> I don't like it when it makes weird sounds. 
What's the weird sound? What I don't know, it was the wheels, I think. Wheels. Wheels know. that make weird sounds. Thank you all so much for watching. That's all we have time for for today. Uh, if you liked the video, like the video. Uh, and if you want to see more Chase's content and me sort of preparing it for drifting, which I haven't really told any of you guys yet, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace out. Catch you later.